All right, well, now that I've got everything on the bike, it's time to do the wiring, which is definitely the most tedious part because not only do you have to wire everything correctly, but the wires have to be routed well, you know, in a way where they're not just hanging around. And, you know, down here, you have the harness for the controller, which I have no idea what I'm gonna do with all those wires. You know, I had an idea of like creating a little wiring box in this space, and I guess that's something that I'll have to do, but, you know, I already painted the frame, so I don't wanna do any more like grinding or welding or something like that. Really just wanna use the mounts that are there, but I'm gonna have to do something with that. But before we get into that, I just wanna go over the high voltage wiring that I've put together. So those wires are already in place. So I'm just gonna go through that real quick. So I'll start with the negative terminal. So I have the negative terminal here, obviously, and that's connected directly to the shunt. And the shunt, of course, measures your current. Um, so that would connect here. I would have a little current meter attached to this point. And then I would be able to measure my current as it flows through the shunt. But on the opposite side, I have the negative line, the main one, uh, AWG4, by the way, are the size wires that I'm using. So that's running all the way directly to the negative terminal on the controller down there. And then I have another wire that split off of that piece and that's going to that negative wire junction where I would have a bunch of my grounds connected. So basically that's kind of a central junction point for all my grounds that's connected to the negative line. And that's pretty much it for the negative line at the moment. On the positive side, I have this wire going from the positive terminal and that goes directly to the fuse, the main fuse right there. And of course the other terminal from the contactor goes directly to the positive terminal on the controller. Then as you can see down there, I have three wires split off that positive terminal coming from the other side of the fuse. So one of those wires just is dangling out here this would be for the charger. It's, not, it's a AWG 12, it's a lot lower. This is a, a 20 amp hour battery, so the charging current wouldn't be more than 20 amps, um, and really about 10 amps, most likely. So not a whole, no fast charging here on this bike. Or I guess, you know, 0.5C is pretty fast also. Uh, so that's just gonna be the wire for the charger, the, the positive line. Then the other line, the other 12 AWG line, which is a little bit overkill in this case, goes directly to the power converter box. And that negative line is coming off of the ground junction as well, right there. So then you have the positive and the negative high voltage line going into the power conversion box. And I have another video that describes how this box actually works, but when the key switch is activated, the DC-DC converter turns on, and that will give me 12 volts coming out of this connector. So, right here, and also I'll have high voltage coming out of this small line. That's the on-off switch for the controller, and then this is the key switch right there. But that's basically 12 volts. And then that 12 volts is going, at least that one line, because I have multiple lines there, obviously. Uh, so that one line is going directly to the contactor right there. And here's a circuit diagram for the high voltage system. This whole thing is now ready to go. And just to demonstrate, so if I turn my key switch on, you hear that beep, that's the controller turning on. So then my power conversion box is now running. I don't know if you can see, but the fan is running back there. Now, if I hit my uh, contactor, you can hear the contactor close. And then if I rev the throttle, I've got the motor spinning right there.
So that's working. I had an issue before actually when I was revving it that the power conversion box would just completely cut out. So every time I gave it a lot of throttle, I would just lose my 12 volts from the power conversion box and the contactor would open and then close back up. And the controller would blink out because it would suddenly lose the high voltage signal line to keep it on. So I had an issue with this thing. I spent like all day, like six hours trying to de debug it. And what it ended up being is it was a faulty small DC DC converter that I'm using to power the solid state relay. And I'm hoping that the converter itself was faulty, not some, not some wiring issue that I'm overlooking that caused it to become faulty. But I have, I had this other one from my bench tester and this one worked. So I was able to narrow it down to that particular component and then replacing it resolved the issue, but hopefully it'll stay that way. So the next step is to just continue wiring. So I have to put the uh, headlight on and then wire that up, the tail light, um, the signal lights, the horn. So I'm trying to make this thing actually street legal. So I'm gonna have a horn and just all the other electrical accessories. And then once I have all of those basically connected and working, you know, basically I'll be able to ride it at that point. Um, um, I definitely wanna give this thing a test ride. At this point, it's ready to ride, but I still need to clean up the wires even a little bit just to get it riding. And also one major thing I need to do, it's because I have this larger sprocket on the back, I'm gonna need uh, a longer chain because the chain that I created earlier was for a smaller sprocket and there's no way that it's gonna fit. So I bought two additional chains that I'm gonna chain together and place on the bike. Then I can finally give, give this thing a little test ride around the block. So I think those things will be next. <laughs> 